All right, guys, Nate Vincent here with FC Bureau. We're going to be doing a DIY on the Volvo C30 behind me. We're going to be replacing the oil filter housing, uh, mainly due to the PCV failure on top of this thing. Um, this is a kit sold on fcbureau.com with all the components needed to do that. And also, we have the oil change kit for the car right here because obviously, this is the oil filter housing. We're going to have to drain a lot of oil out to do that job. So, we have the oil change kit here from FC Bureau as well. So, let's jump into this job and let's get started. So how do you know if you need to replace your oil filter housing and your PCV system on your Volvo P1? This is going to go for the C30, the S40, the V50, and the C70, both the T5 engines and the 2.4i engines. This is most commonly found on the T5 engines though. The way you're going to be able to know that you need this is you're going to be able to hear a significant amount of whirring or suction coming from the valve cover of the engine. It's going to sound something like this. Basically what happens is when the diaphragm tears on this, you get a high amount of vacuum in the crankcase. That vacuum tries to seep past the oil fill and it makes a sort of whistling or whirring noise. The way you can tell is if you pull the oil fill cap off, you can feel that there's a significant amount of vacuum there and you'll actually pop it up and the, and the noise will go away. If that's going on in your engine, I can almost guarantee you that the diaphragm in your PCV system has torn and this part needs to be replaced. So if you Go ahead and continue driving the car and do not replace this. What's going to happen is that, that high level of crankcase vacuum is going to start wearing out all of your engine seals. So you're talking camshaft seals, main seals, even some of the gaskets. What happens is it all sucks in and they start wearing out and you're going to develop a series of oil leaks. So I highly recommend changing this at the first signs of any, any problem. So you also may see some codes um, being displayed or a check engine light being displayed on the car. Uh, some of those codes are going to be kind of random. Uh, you may see high vacuum, you may see um, codes such as idle uh, control module, not being able to adjust the idle properly, um, some other random things. Uh, basically when the PCV system allows extra vacuum in the crankcase, the engine just doesn't get happy and it just kind of runs a little bit rough, especially around idle and you'll notice it when you're driving the car. All right, so the tools required to do this DIY are going to be a razor blade uh, to cut the old hoses, uh, you're going to need snips to cut some zip ties, 90 degree pick, flathead screwdriver. You're gonna need a 17 and a 10 millimeter wrench. Um, you'll also need an eight and a 10 millimeter socket, a ratchet, a couple of different extensions, and a T25 and a T30 bit. And the last thing you're gonna need is a 36 millimeter oil filter wrench to remove the oil filter from the housing. All right, so the first step is we're going to remove a couple of things out of this engine bay just to gain access. One of those is going to be the boost pipe right here. The next one is going to be the air scoop for the air box. Um, and we're going to disconnect a couple of vacuum lines. We're going to basically start pulling things back so we have access to everything we need to to address the oil filter housing and the PCV system. First thing I'm going to do is loosen up the clamps holding the um, fresh air feed for the turbocharger. So this comes off of the mass airflow and off of the air box and it feeds fresh air into the turbocharger that sits behind the engine. So I'm using a flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to loosen up these clamps. And we have a 10 millimeter fastener down on the side of the engine head. And there's also one right on the back here. So we're going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. So before we pop this out of the way, we're going to disconnect this vacuum line right here just by pushing down on the blue and pulling it out just like that. Um, and just to get this thing a little cleaner and easier to work on, we're going to remove this one as well. So we just push down on the red collar and we just pull this straight out just like that. Now we can kind of set these aside um, or you can disconnect it from the brake vacuum just like that and just kind of pull this whole system off to the side. And that will allow for this whole assembly to be removed just like that. So right here we have the vacuum line, we have the one mount on the side of the cylinder head, and we have the one mount on the back of the valve cover. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover. It's simple. It is a T30 bit and is one, two, three, four, five, six bolts, and this whole cover is going to come off. So what I'm doing right now is there's a significant amount of rust in these bolts. So I'm just using a pick and trying to get as much out of it as I can so I can get this T30 bit to fit in as tight as possible so I don't have to drill them out. I'd really like to avoid drilling these bolts out. And now we pull up the cover. All right, so the next step is we're going to remove the air feed for the air box. Uh, so normally this is two eight millimeter bolts. On this car, it's missing one of the bolts right here. Uh, so we just have one eight millimeter right here. All right, so now pulling up. Um, normally this has a lock on it. The lock is actually broken on this car, um, but, and then it pops off here. I'm gonna use my little pick. Just start that. All right, so the next step is we're going to remove the actual 90 degree that goes into the airbox. This is very simple. Basically reach down and just wiggle and pull it to the passenger side of the car and it will release just like that, just clips in. All right, so now we have our first access to actually seeing um, the PCV system and the oil filter housing. So basically that lives right here. So the next step is we're actually going to um, try to remove this entire air box to get access to this so we can work underneath here. First step here, unplug the mass airflow sensor to release the, the lock on the bottom and pull up. You can see it's just a push lock, just like that. Set that aside. And then now just to make sure I protect this, I'm actually going to unbolt the um, mass airflow from the airbox so I can wiggle the airbox a little more. So now with a T25 bit, I'm gonna remove the two torques that hold the mass airflow into the airbox. Now that's removed, we can remove the mass airflow just by simply wiggling and pulling it out. Just like that. There's just a big rubber seal there um, that's gonna to have to separate. All right, the next step is we're going to remove the cover for the computer. So right here, I'm pulling up the cover and I'm gaining access to the engine computer. You can see, I simply just pulled this up, it clips in right here and it just slides into a little lock right there on this corner. Now, before we go any further with this, we're gonna disconnect the battery before we disconnect the engine computer. So pulling the cover up, we are going to remove the negative terminal, which on this case, um, obviously leading from the ground, is this one right here. So quickly putting a 10 millimeter on there. And now we're gonna just pull that up and make sure that is out of the way. So now that we have the battery disconnected from the, from the engine, we're going to remove the ECM from the air box. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug it right here, and then we're gonna remove the series of T30 torques on the outside of the computer to remove it in case it gets damaged. This allows us to give a little more movement to the airbox to get it free from underneath the intake manifold and also make sure that this won't get damaged. So first thing I'm gonna do is unplug the harnesses, push down right here and click the red back. And now I'm just gonna wiggle the top portion off just like that. And now I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. So push down with my thumb. So you can see there, push down and now pull the red up. And then wiggle it off. Now both are disconnected. I'm just gonna set those aside. Make sure those wires don't get damaged. And now we're going to take a T30 and we're gonna unbolt the ECM. I'm gonna leave that bolt in there just as a holder. And now that I have the, bottom, the three hard to get bolts out, I'm gonna get the easy to bolt, get bolt out and pull the CCM. And just pull that right off. So now the next step is we want to get this wiring harness right here disconnected from the air box. So there's a series of ways to do that. So right here, you can see there's a, there is a zip tie going around the harness. We're gonna cut these zip ties. And then on the back, there's actually a section of harness right here um, you can kind of see it if I flip this up and out of the way. There's a section of harness 
here that is actually bolted down to it. So we're gonna remove that bolt there. There, we want to really just make sure that this whole harness can disconnect. You can see there's a pin there. Um, so right underneath here, there is another rivet going into the airbox. All right, so now we're going to try to remove the airbox. Um, you can see here making sure um, there's still a little bit of a tab here so we're going to just be careful of that when we try to pull this out but this harness can't really move because it's up against the transmission right now um, but there is a mount right here there is a mount right over here and then there is one underneath so basically the goal here is to try to wiggle these out of these rubber mounts so just like that you can see it's starting to come out So now that I have a little more room, I'm just gonna make sure to slide this harness forward. And it looks like there might be one zip tie that is just rogue and around. All right, so now we should be able to finesse, is the word, this air box out. So it's gonna be a series of back and forth. Make sure all the lines are out of the way. Moving it to the right. So basically the trick is to pop it up and just keep sliding it out this way. Um, these little guys are gonna get stuck on some things. You can see some scrapes on them. Uh, just gotta be careful with it, make sure it doesn't break. Obviously this is good. And now we have access to everything. So the next step is very much just like an oil change. We're going to loosen up the valve cover cap. We're gonna loosen up the oil filter housing cap, put some rags around it to make sure we don't have a huge, huge spill. And then we're gonna go up in the air and we're gonna drain the oil out. Before I do that though, the only thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna pull these accessory bolts off of here and I'm going to go place them next to the new unit so while I'm letting the oil drain from the car I can actually get these ready to thread into the new filter housing and PCV unit. All right using a 36 millimeter socket we're going to loosen up the filter housing so um, and just like we did on normal oil change we'll loosen this up until the o-ring is exposed to make sure that the oil can drain out of the housing. So I can see the o-ring coming up right there and right about there, we should have the O-ring exposed. I can feel how loose that is. So that means that the oil should be able to drain right out of there. I'm just gonna keep going a little more. Uh, right there, just leave it right there to drain out. We're also going to loosen up the oil cap. Uh, we can either leave that in place there just to let it breathe or take it out entirely. So now we're gonna take an eight millimeter wrench and we're gonna loosen these up and get them prepared to go on the new housing. So now I'm going to take this exact bolt that came out of the top mount there for the, for the dipstick and I'm going to start the threads in the new unit. So here with the new unit, you can see I'm just going to match this up um, and just start these threads. You can see that there is no thread started in here. So I'm just going to make sure that I have the right fastener in the right hole. I'm now going to move to this one. I'm going to put it in here and the same with here. And then we'll set these aside. We'll tighten these down for the first time on the workbench. So then when we go to assemble the car, it's much easier and we're not fighting. All right, so for the last one that sits below this one, kind of can't really see it from up here. It's actually underneath here. We're actually going to go from the bottom. So we're going to pull the belly pan off as we drain the oil and we'll have easy access to that. So the last thing we're going to do at the top before we go and drain the oil is we're just going to disconnect the breather valve. So this hose right here is going to be pulled off. So first thing we need to do is break this clamp. So this is a one-time use clamp. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we can also um, come down here and we can either cut it or just get it ready to come apart so we can replace this. But you can see this hose right here, going right here, is, is provided with the kit from FCP Euro. And this hose right here, going into the uh, bottom of the head, is also supplied.
So the easiest way to get these one-time use clamps undone um, is actually to stick a screwdriver and turn it. So you can see I kind of stuck a screwdriver in here, being careful not to damage the coil pack right next door. And I'm just gonna turn that. And as soon as I can turn it a little bit, I can kind of pop it open. Um, once you get it popped open enough, you can actually undo the ratchet on it. Like I said, these are one-time use clamps, uh, so don't expect to use them again. And we'll be putting a normal hose clamp on there to make it easier to service. All right, so here we are under the car. Uh, basically, we're just gonna do the normal oil change procedure. So we're gonna pull the under tray belly pan off. Um, that's gonna be some T30 screws all the way around. And then we are gonna take a 17 millimeter wrench and we're gonna pull the drain plug and drain the oil from the engine. All right, so now we're gonna remove the bottom eight millimeter bolt that we talked about from above. Uh, that's right here. You can see there's a lot more access to it on the bottom than there is on the top. So I'm just gonna push these wires out of the way. All right, so now that we have the fasteners out and basically set here, what we're gonna do is these holes are not tapped. These are very special bolts from Volvo. Um, they actually have a sort of a triangle at the end to cut the threads into this housing. So what you really wanna do is when you start these threads, you wanna make sure it's very straight. This is much easier to do on the workbench. That's why we're doing it here and not in the car. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna thread them all the way in and then we're gonna back them out and then we'll install this unit in the car. And as you can see, now there are threads cut into this piece and it'll be much easier to assemble it on the car. All right, so now this unit is ready for assembly. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start loosening up the bolts that hold the oil filter housing to the block. So there's three bolts, one, two, three here, and then there's one up at the top. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get these two loose and I'm gonna turn this one loose, but I'm gonna tighten it back down. That will make it so when we lower the car back down, it's much easier to get this out from the top. And now loosen this one, but we're just gonna retighten it after we get it broken loose. So make sure it will loosen up, and then I'm just gonna snug it back down just a little bit so I can get to it again. All right, so now we're going to reinstall the oil drain plug um, and we're gonna go up to the top side and finish pulling off the oil filter housing. All right, so now that we have the bottom bolts loose, two of them removed, one of them just sitting there and the oil has been drained, we're gonna remove the oil filter housing. So the first thing we're gonna do is unplug it. So we're just gonna simply wiggle, push our thumb in and wiggle this plug off, just like that. And now moving this coolant line to the side, we can gain access to the top bolt. So I'm pulling the plug down and there's a knock sensor wire there. I'm moving that to the side and you can see right here, we have a 10 millimeter bolt. This is the top mount for this filter housing. Now I do have an oil catch under the car because I do expect some oil to be leaking out of this as soon as we pull it off. All right, so now we are one of my favorite parts of the job. We are basically going to cut these two hoses so we can pull this out and we can pull the hoses off. So right now, I'm just gonna simply cut down through here. Make sure you don't go into your coolant line. And we're gonna cut this one right here. All right, so now taking our 10 millimeter wrench, we're gonna go back to that bottom bolt that we left in. Okay. All right, just pulling the oil filter housing or, or the cap here, just get it out of the way. And here we go, final, final movement. So we're gonna just pull this out and carefully slide this up. So I just wanna show real quick before we put this whole thing back together, um, what happens if you don't change your PCV system. So I drove this car for about two weeks uh, while it was making that noise and it, and it progressively got worse. Now, if you look in here, you can see all of this oil around the, uh, this is the intake cam and the exhaust cam here. You can see clearly uh, the intake cam, if I wipe my finger on that, you can just see all the oil that's coming off of there. Um, the exhaust cam's not so bad, but there definitely is some oil on it. If you look at my middle finger. Um, but what happens is the, create the massive vacuum that the engine creates basically takes these seals and it, it wears these seals out prematurely and then the cars start leaking oil. So um, the next time we do a timing belt on this car, we're going to be replacing the intake, the exhaust, and the main uh, seal on the timing side of the engine because 
uh, we were a little late to replace this component right here. So that is why it is so critical. I uh, just want to get that in front of you guys so everyone can know. All right, so I've used a pick um, and a rag and I've cleaned up all of these mating surfaces. So right here, and then mainly these two right here, and of course this one here. Made sure they're clean inside and out and that the mating surface is nice and clean so we'll get a good seal. Now it's time to get the hoses ready. Um, so I'm gonna pull what's remaining of this top breather hose up through the top. So you can see it feeds right through the intake manifold. Um, I'm just gonna wiggle that right up and through, just like that. Now, taking the old one, remember we cut this a little bit short, we're gonna feed that one back down through. I'm not gonna go all the way down. Um, I'm gonna leave it up just a little bit, but that's where it's gonna go eventually. The other one we're gonna do is this one right here. So we're just gonna pull this hose off right there. All right, the time has come. We have the new housing here. Um, we're going to slide it down into place and connect it up. I have the bolts on standby right here, ready to be attached, and we'll see how this goes. All right, so sliding it down from the top. You can see the key is really to make sure nothing is behind it, nothing gets sandwiched behind it. Um, so making sure this coolant hose is moved out of the way, making sure this knock sensor is moved out of the way. So you have a little break in that wire. Just make sure that's safe. And then of course on the bottom, we need to pull the harness. You use this little pick, just pull the harness out. So you can see now we are lined up with the top bolt hole here. So I'm gonna take a bolt. Move all this, this stuff over to the side. And feed that in. Now before I totally clamp that down, we're gonna clamp down the one on the bottom. All right, so now we're going to put in the three bottom bolts that hold the oil filter housing on. Um, I have one snug right now. I'm going to just tighten that down by hand, nice and snug. And then the other two, one here and one here, uh, we're gonna tighten those down and then we're gonna put a wrench on those and tighten those down all the way. So now tightening this down. These are 10 millimeter. Make sure all three are nice and snug. This is your bottom oil seal right here. Snug, snug, snug. All right, so before I go up back up top, the last thing I'm gonna do down here is just take some brake clean and I'm gonna clean the oil residue off of here to make sure we know this isn't leaking when we start the engine. All right, so now we're gonna finalize this install here um, by tightening down the 10 millimeter top bolt that holds the filter housing on. And now we're going to start plugging in and getting everything ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do here, get the plug for the oil filter housing and get this knock sensor wire in the correct order and plug that in. All right, now we are going to take the 90 degree supplied with the kit and we're gonna install that. So it's gonna go vertically and horizontally on the actual unit that we just installed. All right, and now taking the one that goes up to your engine cover, and we're going to pull that through. All right, slide that down. Now we can slide the clamp down, and we can make sure that is seated properly. Now, when tightening this clamp, if you do not have the battery disconnected, remember we disconnected it before, you wanna be very careful because this is the positive lead on the battery, and if you were to hit this, it will ground out an arc. All right, now doing the same to the top. Make sure that's good and tight, and make sure that this clamp doesn't impede access to the coil pack and removing it. We can slide that down, and I'm actually Pull this up and we're gonna tighten this down. Um, this is a great place if you have a flex head driver for a six or seven millimeter. Um, we sell one on the site from CTA. It's a really great tool for these situations. Now we fit this right down into the groove. Just like that. And it's ready to go. All right, so now just finishing up by tightening down the top eight millimeter. Um, we tightened the bottom down, we left the top a little loose so the bracket could wiggle a little bit. 
now we're just snugging that down. Good and snug. Uh, our dipstick snug, our wiring is snug and out of the way. Everything's plugged in and where it needs to go and connected. Our next step is we are going to install the air box again. Uh, so you remember how much of a pain that was to get out. So we're going to wiggle this in into location. Then we're going to install the ECM, plug all this stuff back in. And uh, before we go too far, we're going to start, you know, put oil in the car and start it and make sure we have no leaks. All right, so here we go with the air box to reinstall. All right, so now we're back into the general vicinity. I'm going to lift it up and we're going to line these three pins into the grommets. Before we go too far though, we're going to hook the wiring harness back onto the bottom of it. So remember this has to wrap around. So first thing we're gonna do is get this wiring harness back in this groove. So now that that's in the groove, we can slide this whole thing back and around. And we're gonna put the T30 bit right through there holding the harness to the air box. Um, again, we're going to cut this zip tie and we're going to make sure that this harness is where it needs to go. So there's a little hook on the bottom of the airbox. We've got to kind of pull this whole loom around and pull it back in like that to get it in the right location. Um, and then we can take this little rivet and line that up with the hole here. All right, so now we have the long T30 uh, that threads in and holds the harness in place. Um, and now just making sure everything in the harness is snugged in and then we are going to feed it into the three grommets. All right, we're back in. So next step is install the ECM. So you got to make sure the seal is good because this seal actually seals up the air box. So make sure it's lined up correctly. And right to those pins. Hold it in place, and then I'm going to thread a couple of these in by hand um, as much as I can just to make sure it stays there, and then we'll tighten them down. And again, that is a T30 bit on these. All right, so now that we have the ECM in, we can plug it in. So starting at the lower plug, um, the trick here is to line everything up and then slide the bar down, making sure it engages and pulls the plug inward. Again, here at the top, pull it down and make sure both are locked in place. And we're good to go. All right, so now we're gonna install the mass airflow. There's two T25 Torx that hold this in place. Um, and a pretty big rubber seal. You want the plug up and to the right. So kind of wiggle that in place. Make sure we have a good purchase. And then one screw on the top, one on the bottom. So now we can plug the mass airflow sensor in. Line that up, give it a good snug. You wanna make sure the clip on the bottom clips in. So next thing we're gonna do is bolt this beauty cover down. Uh, very simple, just slide it into place. Um, I've left the fasteners right inside of it. You kind of want to pop it down. Okay, now that we have the beauty cover down, we are going to bolt the um, fresh air pipe for the turbo down. Um, this is going to slide in the back here first. Take a little bit of force, and then we're going to slide it on the mass airflow. Um, before I tighten this clamp or this clamp, we are going to tighten the 10 millimeters uh, down that hold this into place. There's one right here on the back of the valve cover that goes straight in. There's also one on the side that goes into the cylinder head. It's really hard to see. And tighten the 10 millimeter down on the back of the head. All right, next step is to tighten the clamps down. All right, so now we're going to reinstall the vacuum line sort of harness here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is right on the bottom, we're gonna clip it into the fresh air hose right there. And then we're gonna go through the firewall right here. Make sure that is clipped on entirely. And then right here, 
again, make sure it's clipped on entirely. And the final one is this red part right here. Basically slide it in and then pull back and make sure it's clamped down. So the final thing we need to do before we can add oil and start the engine is we're going to pop the top off the new filter housing and install an oil filter. Oops. So we're gonna do this the way we would normally change oil on this car. Look at that, they even gave us a new filter. Good thing we checked them. So what I'm gonna do is sprinkle a little bit of oil on this O-ring so it's not so tight going in. It was definitely binding up a lot. Um, and then we'll reinstall this and we'll start this car. So aside from two things, we left the trim out for the air duct down to the air box and the trim covering the ECU. Um, we're going to now fill the car with oil. Um, the reason I left this off is so we can see if there's any leaks. We can look down there while the car starts. Um, and then obviously when we know it's not leaking, we can then install this. So let's go fill the car up with about six liters of oil um, and make sure we have enough in the sump to run the engine. I'm gonna quickly check the dipstick and make sure that there's oil registering on the dipstick. Therefore, there's oil in the sump and we won't get low oil pressure. Um, and then we're gonna start the engine and make sure we build pressure and also check around the housing for any leaks while the engine runs. You can see we are almost to the top. Um, I know that's gonna go down obviously because the filter is dry and it's gonna suck some oil through. So it should be a good starting point. We'll probably add another liter by the end. All right, so before we start the car, the last thing we need to do is reconnect our power. So I'm gonna take this uh, ground and we're gonna reconnect it over here. So make sure it fits in place. Obviously you can hear the engine. Now we have power, it's building fuel pressure. And I'm just gonna tighten this 10 millimeter down. Really quick, we have the oil pressure light right here on the dash. Um, when I start the car, I'm just gonna make sure that that light goes out within three or four seconds to make sure that we've built oil pressure and we couldn't damage the engine. So now I've seen the light go out. I know we're building oil pressure, so I'm happy. Uh, one thing you will note is that when I open this up, you can see there's a little bit of vacuum there, but you can see there's not much of a change when I pull that out compared to before. That means the PCV system is working appropriately. So I can look down, I can see the, the belly pan, I can see that the bolts on the bottom are dry. And you can see I'm looking right at that bolt there that we put in. Um, that's showing me that we have a good positive seal. Um, obviously for the first, you know, probably 100 miles I drive the car, I'm gonna keep an eye on this and just make sure we don't have any, any oil leaks. If something got stuck behind there or the seal isn't seated properly. Um, but we should be good to go aside from that. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is install the computer cover. Uh, it's pretty simple, it just literally slides in here. Let's see. I didn't like that. And then the top corner goes in and this top corner goes in, just like that. All right, so now we are going to put the um, lower section. I will note that this has a lock on it. So if you slide this in and you turn it like that, it locks itself in place and you turn it like that, it unlocks. Um, I've seen many of them broken. This one's actually pretty good. So we'll slide it in just like this, pull the fastener out. Um, and the key is to try to get it to go in to the airbox. Okay, we're in the airbox, and now we're gonna slide down here. We're gonna line up to our front duct. And now, last thing is we're going to tighten down this eight millimeter. And now we're going to install the cover on the battery. Two tabs in the back, down in the front. We are going to install the underbelly pan and these are held in by a series of T30 fasteners. And the final thing is I'm just going to check the oil level and get it up to its maximum. We put six liters in, it holds a little bit between six and seven. So I'm just gonna add a little bit as needed. We're actually pretty close, uh, just a hair under it. So I'm actually not gonna add any to this. I'm just gonna leave it where it is and keep it from here. All right, guys, that concludes the Volvo P1 PCV DIY. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. We'll catch you on the next one.